Global warming reports are factual. The Earth is getting warmer for whatever reason. What's important now is that we get involved in global cooling measures and CO2 absorption through forestry will definitely reduce the greenhouse effect and cool the planet. We need to be keeping our eye on the big picture in all of this. It has become necessary and urgent to take measures to stop the polar ice caps from melting because the sea level rises associated with that would be absolutely disastrous for us, for us all. We'd lose billions upon billions of pounds or dollars in real estate lost to the sea, just to mention one thing. So we have to keep our eye on the ball, and that means cooling the planet now. It's possible to demonstrate in a laboratory that CO2 causes a greenhouse effect. So if we can somehow diminish any greenhouse effect by removing CO2 from Earth's atmosphere, we'll do damage to the greenhouse effect and cool the planet. This changes the emphasis. It reminds me of something similar that happened in the field of cancer research. A number of years ago, I made a small contribution to the cancer research campaign in the United Kingdom. Volunteer collectors were out in force one day in Glasgow city centre, and when you'd put a few coins in their collection box, they'd stick a, a little sticker on the lapel of your jacket to show the other collectors that you'd already contributed. Anyway, a couple of days later, when I was removing the sticker, I got to thinking about what their logo on the sticker might mean. You see, it was a little triangle of circles, a bit like a pyramid of circles, with one of the circles shaded in. I thought that this shaded in circle m might represent the cancer cell in an otherwise healthy body. So, when curiosity finally got the better of me, I phoned up the cancer research campaign to see about it. Well, they put me through to one of their senior researchers, and when I asked her about the logo on the sticker, she confirmed for me that it meant what I had thought it had meant. She said that the little shaded in circle represented what they call the rogue cell. I then asked her if they were investing the most of the research effort into looking at the rogue cell or healthy cells and she said that's a very interesting question you're asking me. She said that up until recently they had been investing the bulk of their effort looking at the rogue cell but recently they had switched their focus to trying to find out what it is that makes a healthy cell go rogue? Well, you might be wondering what's all this got to do with carbon dioxide and global warming? Well, just this. Because we're now kind of getting a blinding flash of the obvious that if we can do damage to the greenhouse effect by removing existing CO2 levels from the atmosphere, then this has the potential to save the ice caps by cooling the planet. The emphasis has changed. It's a bit like when you have two people doing a dance together, perhaps a waltz or a tango where one partner takes the lead and the other partner follows, but then later in the dance the second partner takes the lead and the first partner fo follows. Well, in the same sort of way, whereas curbing carbon emissions at source was in the lead position until now with carbon capture following. Well, because of the realisation that we can't replace the ice caps overnight, there's a realisation that there's an urgency. The emphasis has switched now 
to it's being urgent for carbon capture to be taking the lead and to have the curbing of carbon emissions at source supporting that following. It's important to put the horse before the cart if we're to make the best progress in our efforts. Because imagine if our efforts at saving the planet from ice cap disaster was to turn out to be too little too late. The important thing is that we win this game and have a winning attitude about it. Not merely being content to take part in it by putting the cart before the horse in our efforts, no. Because it's our planet that's at stake, our very lives are at stake, and the lives of our descendants who have not even been born yet. We have to gather the very best, the most robust response to this threat that we can muster. Going on the offensive by absorbing the existing carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere will cause a negative greenhouse effect. We know this because we can model it in the laboratory. All this means that just as with cancer research, for example, there had to be a switch in focus to find out what it is that makes a healthy cell go rogue. In the same sort of way, carbon capture, now because of the urgency, has to become the star of the show. And the price of forests will rise. We sell forests worldwide. So if you'd like to buy forests simply for the knowing that you'll be contributing to Earth's environmental rescue through forest ownership, that's wonderful. But also because you might recognise that there's an opportunity for the multiplying of your net worth through the growth and the capital value of forests that's coming. That's also a good reason to get involved in forestry. If you'd like to get involved in forestry, get in touch with us and we'll put you in touch with people who want to sell forests. And if you'd like to sell your forest, sell it through us. Our fee for selling your forest will be based on performance. The more we get f for you for your forest, the better our fee. So we're motivated to serve you well, actually very well. So give me a call. My name is Francis McMenamin and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.